All right, now it's L'Shem Shemayim, right? Because we're not making any money on YouTube. <laughs> We've been demonetized. So now I can say whatever I want. I don't have to worry about be being demonetized. Um, so I saw an interesting video recently. I don't remember who made it. I probably I'll make another video. It's a bit more professional covering, um, you know, the stuff with that. But it is as follows. It was in reference, it was, it was a pro-Zionist video in reference to a video made by uh, Rabbi Yaakov Shapiro, Zolgazunsan, a very Choshuba Yudraman from Bayswater, a rough there, in a in Smedrish there in Bayswater, uh, Farakaway area, and also a spokesperson for Natruna. And it's interesting how this uh, the Zionist speaker is a yid with a long beard, a big black yarmulke, and uh, I, I don't know if the accent was South African or maybe was South African. They tend to be very Zionist, the South Africans. Um, and I can't blame them. You know, they have things pretty scary there. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of similar to how uh, Poland tended to be more, more uh, pro-Zionist than Hungary because life was much nicer in, in Hungary than it was in Poland. Um, and so, uh, like the, uh, you know, even Talmidei Chachamim, you know, sometimes would uh, kind of lose their mind from the, tier, from the tiers, from the difficulties of living in a difficult area. Um, like, we, you know, we saw the, the uh, Rav Teichtal, he was a Choshebe Rav, and uh, a brilliant genius, he was a Talmud Chachim, and so if Yomov, you know, because, uh, you know, the, all the difficulties with the war, he, he wrote a book, uh, you know, which was part of, you know, the difficulties that he had encountering and, uh, but uh, that being said, we'll put that aside. The video was in response, like I said, to a video from, from Rabbi uh, Shapiro about Yerushalayim, about Jerusalem. And in the video, uh, we see Rabbi Shapiro was sitting there watching um, was uh, watching the president, Donald Trump. Very happy. It's still a simcha to hear that Donald Trump is the president. It's so amazing. It's such a source of joy that we don't have Hillary Clinton as as Donald Trump wasn't my first choice, but Hillary Clinton would have been so bad, would have been so destructive for America, and it's such a source of joy that Donald Trump was president, is now the president instead of Hillary Clinton, or anybody, even, even if Bernie Sanders was president instead of Hillary Clinton, would have at least been something, you know, but uh, as I've said, but uh, so we're talking about uh, Yerushalayim, about Jerusalem. So Donald Trump made a speech and he says, you know, he's going to move the embassy to Jerusalem, the eternal capital of the Jewish people. And Rabbi Shapiro said, you know, he, I, he had me until that. He's like, Donald Trump can do whatever he wants or whatever, really more precisely, whatever's in the interest of America, whatever he believes to be in the interest of America. And if he believes that strategically and for many other reasons, it's good to move the embassy, the American embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and that's his prerogative. And, and furthermore, you know, it makes sense on many other reasons if Israel claims Jerusalem to be its capital. Who is anybody else to say that Tel Aviv is its capital? But just like if, uh, you know, England claims London is its capital, and nobody can, you know, wouldn't make sense to have an embassy in Manchester. You know, it's just, it's just common sense. But the point that Rabbi Shapiro was bringing out is 
it has nothing to do with the Jewish people. It has to do with America's relationship with another country, Israel. And it has nothing to do with the Jewish people. And so if someone would ask me about this, if, if Donald Trump would ask me, I would say, if you think it's good to do it, you do it, but don't do it for me, just because I voted for you and you want to do me some kind of a favor, you know. Setting free Rabashkin is much better than moving the embassy to Jerusalem. But I appreciate the sentiment. I'm not saying that uh, he's doing something wrong or that he has wrong intentions. And I understand he has a good sentiment why uh, that's pro-Jewish. Why? But my, the point that Rabbi Shapiro, I believe, is trying to bring out is that the, what, what Rabbi Shapiro wants to bring out is as a Jew, you don't have to do that favor for me because it has nothing to do with me <clears throat> whether or not the Israeli embassy is in Jerusalem has nothing to do with me as a Jew. So Rabbi Shapiro, he goes on to say like this, he says, <coughs> if, um, he said that a, a, a capital belongs to a nation, a country, and not to a religion. Religions don't have capitals. Countries do. Nation, uh, nations do. And the Jewish people are not a country, a nation in that sense. We're a religious community. And so in that sense, Jerusalem is our holy city. It's our holiest city. And um, But it's not our capital. Meaning there's no political inference that can be made vis-a-vis Jews and uh, as, a, as a religion, and Israel is the capital city of a country. It's a, it is a holy city to us. So that the maker of this video, I don't remember what his name is, he basically is saying like this. He says, well, first of all, yes, Jerusalem is a holy city to us, like how Mecca is to the Muslims, would, you know, they would make the pilgrimages three days. I think, uh, I think that um, Rabbi Shapiro would agree to that sushtel, to that comparison, to that analogy that Mecca is to Muslims, which Jerusalem is to Jews, and perhaps even with the Vatican is to Catholics, and uh, I would agree to that as well, but a um, you know an Iranian uh, as a Muslim has a religious devotion to Mecca that a but he doesn't have a political connection particularly because the Iranians are Shiites for the most part although there are Sunnis in Iran but the majority of uh, you know, Iran is a majority Shiite country, and Saudi Arabia is a majority Sunni country, as most Muslim majority countries are. And that's it. And uh, and so there's no political connection between the Iranian Muslim and Mecca. It's a political. It's a religious connection, not a political connection. Just like uh, the Catholic in Ireland. His capital city is Dublin. You can't say because his, he's uh, because he's a, a Catholic. Well, his capital city is the Vatican. It, it, it just uh, it, it's not really so. Um, it's the Vatican is his holy city. The Vatican is where the Pope lives, and and that's you know that's the head of his church. But it's not it's not a. Uh, political connection it's a religious one and so too we as Jews we have a, a, a very strong religious devotion to Jerusalem but the religious devotion is not political so uh, the, the maker of this video said as follows he said well it was for King David it was the capital And uh, that's really insignificant. 
I mean, yes, for King David was the capital, it was the seat of government. In those days we had a Jewish government. And it was as part of a religious devotion that we believed in theocracy. And we had a true theocracy that was led by um, that was led by kings who, li who listened to prophets. You know, uh, I mean, <coughs> we had a theocratic state under King David and under the judges and under even under Solomon and under Hezekiah and Josiah. And, uh, and David humbled himself before Nathan and Gad. He didn't say, oh, I'm the king and you, you can go do whatever, you know, you, you're off with your head if you're going to violate with what I said. Nathan confronted David and told him, you're a sinner. Even though the rabbis argued that he didn't break the letter of the law, but he of course broke the spirit of the law. And, and, and David humbled himself before Nathan because he recognized that he was only, that as the king of, of Israel, he was the ambassador of God and not simply a political leader, you know. If uh, there's no comparison, but even if just the reality, the chief rabbi of Israel, you know, Lau or, or Yosef, either one of them, goes and tells Netanyahu, you know, um, you're a sinner, uh, they would probably lose their job. They wouldn't get killed. It's not as you know extreme as, as it was under monarchy, perhaps, but they they would lose their job. Uh, the reason why they have a position like that of chief rabbi of the government of the state of Israel is because they kowtow to the government. If uh, uh, you know, they're never going to make. Um, you know, uh, Rev. Tuvia Weiss, who's the chief rabbi of the ultra-Orthodox community, non-government, doesn't uh, doesn't recognize the government and, and opposes the government, they're not going to make him the chief rabbi under the chief rabbinate of the rabbinut of Jerusalem or, or of anything or, or of Israel because he opposes the government, he's independent, he's, he doesn't kowtow. And the and, and Lau and Yosef, they they they're government workers. They they they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. So you know. So and and I'm not saying there's you know I I'm not criticizing them for that. It's just a reality. You know. And they're doing their job, it's just the same, you know, whatever job you have. That's just you're not you're going to lose your job if you don't count out to your boss, you know, unless you're self-employed. So um, so whatever. That's just that's just how it works, you know. So and, and I'm not saying that that the chief rabbis should go and insult Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm just saying that, you know, we have to uh, be realistic, and there's a difference between King David and Netanyahu. And that's the major difference, is that David humbled himself before, before the prophets, and even uh, even uh, Begin, I don't think, would have done that. You know, as uh, Begin was probably the most religious, you know, prime minister the modern state of Israel ever had. And Begin, if if uh, if uh, you know, I don't know who was the chief rabbi then. It was Gorin? I don't know who was. He would have said something. First of all, Garin would definitely would have said anything to uh, to, to to Begin. You know, Begin was probably firmer than than Garin. It's not open.
why is that side not open? I don't know. So, you can't make a Tzustel Jerusalem uh, being the capital of the Jewish people. It's our holiest city, but let's also look at the sources. So then, so yes, yeah, in ancient time, but we're not living in ancient times. We don't have a theocracy today. We don't have, you can't make the comparison to the days of King David when Jerusalem was indeed the capital <coughs> of the Jewish people. And the Jewish people was a nation state. We were not an exiled people. Uh, there were there were no Jews in exile in the days of David, and you cannot make comparisons to King David's time to our time. And it's ironic that it's the ultra orthodox who are pointing out how anachronistic the uh, the modern orthodox are. And it's it's quite quite strange that the the ones who call themselves modern are really the more old-fashioned ones, and the ones who the modern call ultra really the ultra orthodox don't self-identify as ultra orthodox. Term Haredi, all right, it's Haredish. Uh, it means someone. Who, like like the Quakers, you know, means someone who quakes in front of God, who just shuckles and shakes. So it's a word you find in, in the Bible, Achredim Ludvar Hashem, those who, are, who tremble at the word of God. Uh, I don't know if that's really the proper term either, and, and so forth. Torah the key, then people who, who follow Das Torah and who, who um, you know, the rabbis, they, they follow the rabbis, not that the rabbis follow them. Because that's really the main difference between the Haredi world and the modern Orthodox world. Is that for the most part, modern Orthodoxy hires their rabbis. And for the most part, the Haredi world, the rabbis are entrepreneurial. They have to go raise money for themselves, for their own, for their own organizations. And so... Since the ultra-Orthodox rabbis tend to be autonomous, they can say what the Torah actually says, and they don't have to be afraid. Just like now, I don't, I don't have to be afraid of of YouTube, um, you know, demonetizing my videos for making something that's offensive because they already demonetized it. So there we go. So now um, I can just say what I want to say. Um, all right. Well, we're going to have to finish this video later because I have a call coming in. All right.